conversation. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank is you that okay? Much. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for letting me join you today. And a hello from Portsmouth. Um, I, I hope I'm joined by people from all over the place, but I believe there's going to be a lot of Egyptians on today. So thanks for coming to find out more about Portsmouth. Um, we are a um, South Coast UK university, 90 minutes from London. And as you can see, we are a seaside city, which is a, a nice change from some of the big cities like London and Birmingham. Um, and this gives you an, an idea of what the city looks like. So it's famous for uh, the Navy. So the Royal Navy are based in Portsmouth. And you can see that at the top of the picture there, that's the Naval base. Um, it's also famous for being very historical and a bit of a tourist attraction as well in that sense. Um, but it's also very modern. So the, um, the big tower that you can see behind me and also in this picture is the Spinnaker Tower, which is basically a lookout platform. And you can see the whole of Portsmouth and the Solent and it's a beautiful viewing place. So you can see there we're 70 miles from London, very easy access from Heathrow and Gatwick Airport. So an hour just over, depending on traffic from each. Um, but we are a city centre campus. <clears throat> so there's one university in Portsmouth and it's right in the centre. And the campus is located in amongst the shops, the cafes. It's very, very um, thriving and interesting place to be. And it's also very cosmopolitan and we get students from all over the world. So over 150 different nationalities, around um, 25,000 students. So it's a really buzzing place when all the students are on campus, which we would hope to happen again uh, coming up this year in September, October time. Um, you can see here, we've also got a lovely uh, green area in Portsmouth. So lots of parks, places to run, walk, cycle, um, and generally be quite active. And in terms of the weather, you do get the best weather in the UK down on the South Coast. Uh, we get more sunshine than most parts of the UK, but obviously this is the UK, so it still does rain here. But um, it is a lovely sunny day today, even though uh, we're only in spring at the moment. So this gives you a little bit more of an idea of the location. So uh, right in the centre of the UK, really um, directly down from, from London. And you can see where Heathrow and Gatwick are in those pictures there. So some of the features of Portsmouth that we're very proud of is um, some of our rankings. So all universities in the UK are now tested in terms of their teaching, and we have been ranked gold in teaching. Um, and that's the logo that you can see in the top right, the gold logo, um, and it's called TEF Gold. So all universities will have been tested and been given a ranking, and ours is at the top. Um, we're also um, in a strong position in terms of consistently strong student satisfaction. So we take a lot of care into our teaching and the teaching is the most important thing to basically make sure students graduate with um, a really good understanding of the subject that they've come into um, and be ready for the workplace. And students are consistently satisfied um, with above um, average grades on that. So in the top 30 for student satisfaction. And we've got some other rankings listed there as well, which you can go through into our in our website, you can see more about the details of all the rankings. In terms of courses, we have a huge range of courses. So five faculties. Um, and these are the the um, the titles of each faculty. So business and law, creative and cultural industries, humanities and social sciences, science and health, technology. So that's the five faculties and within each faculty we have a huge range of courses. So more than 430 different degree programmes. We've got um, a foundation provider, undergraduate, postgraduate and research. And within that we have a huge range as well. We do accept students into um, the second and third year of an undergraduate degree if they're doing a diploma depending on what you've studied, your grades, and we have to check the mapping for that. Um, and then also we take students into master's degrees, taught and research masters as well. 
So a big range of courses. Most courses start in October this year. October 21 is our next intake, but we also have a good range of courses for February 2022 as well. I mentioned our foundation provider, so that the foundation provider is called International College Portsmouth, or we call it ICP. International College Portsmouth is very much integral to the University of Portsmouth, so we work very closely together. We're not completely separate identities. So um, if you come into ICP because your academic level is not quite at the range that we need it to be to come directly into the university, you will do one semester or two semesters at ICP, and then you will come directly onto the university and you can get one CAS to do that. So you don't have to go back to your country to apply for a new visa once you finish your ICP and then come on to Portsmouth. Um, and the campus is based right in the centre of the campus. So you have access to pretty much everything within our campus once you're studying at ICP. The reason students study there is often if you've done like, for example, the Thanawea, you've done 12 years of education and UK students will have done 13 once they've done their A-levels. So we expect students to go to foundation if they've got that 12 years of study. Um, we have around a um, hundred different pathways that you can go through at ICP. Um, and you could even do, let's say you've done A-levels, but your grades are slightly lower and they're not quite right for the university. You could actually maybe do a uh, what we call an international year one, which is first year studying, but you do it in ICP and then you do years two and three at the university. So lots to look into there um, and you can see the ICP Navitas website link um, and it'd be worth having a look if you are thinking about doing a foundation. Lots of different varieties of learning at the university. So it's not all about sitting in a lecture theatre and being talked at. It's also very much about practical learning and learning about going into the workplace, what it would be like. And that's why we have things like the mock courtroom. So if you studied law, you would use our mock courtroom to practice mooting, practice um, all the different elements of being in a courtroom, a barrister, a, a solicitor, um, a, um, even the jury to get an understanding of what it's like to be in a courtroom. If you did, for, for example, something like mechanical engineering, um, students get a chance to um, make a Formula One car and race it against other universities in a competitive environment. Um, if you do something like um, geotechnics, you can see the picture there, it's very practical. Our labs are um, at the top rate um, for the industry and you get to use our facilities throughout your degree. And a lot of these degrees will overlap. So the psychology students would use the mock courtroom to see how people work within a courtroom environment. Um, engineering students would get involved in the Formula um, One car as well, for example. So lots of different areas to get involved in when you're at university. And to make your life better when you come to university and easier, we have a really good support team. So at the moment, you've got support from your agent, TCL. You could also get support from me if you're coming into the university. But once you're there, or once you're about to arrive, you can also find out more about from our international student advisors. Um, and also we have a, an airport pickup when times are normal and there's not a pandemic on. So you could get picked up from Heathrow and brought back onto the campus. Our student advisors are there to help you, um, guide you around the campus, get support from all the different areas that we've got in the university, such as the careers centre, the housing team, the finance team, but also you get your own personal tutor who's linked to your course and they are there to support you in learning, but also support you in anything else you need as well. So when you come to a university um, in the UK, we would expect you to get more than just a degree. We want you to learn. We want you to learn in a practical way um, with being engaged and enjoying your course, but also to get some work experience as well. All our undergraduate courses offer a placement year option. So this means that you could do two years at university, one year working and then one year back at university. And that is offered on all courses. 
We do also have study or work abroad options as well. Obviously, with the pandemic at the moment, they've been harder to come by, but that is an option out there normally. You could learn a language and there are also summer schools available as well. So lots of things to get involved in, in terms of um, building up your work experience and your CV. Um, I will come to any questions at the end, I promise. I can see a few popping up and I will come to them in, the, in when I get to the end. You could also get involved in lots of sports. So anything you do at the moment, any traditional sport like cricket, swimming, basketball, there's a team, there's many teams for each of those. But you could also get in something more um, random like skydiving. Um, <clears throat> uh, you could do lacrosse. There's so many different things out there. So we do have over 150 different sports clubs to um, join. And in your first two weeks at university, we really encourage students to go and see what societies you could join, what clubs, whether it be your course club. So, for example, I know the petroleum engineers have a very large society, which they get very involved in socially, but also academically as well. We also take students on trips around the UK so you can get involved in um, seeing a little bit more of the UK. And we have a global week each year. The picture in the middle there where there's a big crowd in the hall, it obviously wasn't taken this year. Um, this is our, it's called our, um, it's at the centre of our global week. So basically all the different nationalities come together. They um, show off their food, their costumes, their dancing. And in the evening they have a big performance where each nationality that wants to perform can do on stage and this is the en audience enjoying it all um, and it's a really thriving fun event and a really good chance to showcase your nationality as well. So lots of students ask about working when they're studying so I've mentioned placement years which would be a paid placement in your third year of a four uh, well it would be a four-year degree because it would be three years studying and one year working but there's lots of chances to work as well um, during your spare time. So on a tier four visa, you can work between up to 20 hours a week. Normally that would be a um, minimum wage, but you've got an idea of kind of the cost of that, what that would mean. But depending on your age, you will get paid a different amount, but there's lots of work in the city, <clears throat> whether that be in retail, hospitality, but also within the university, we hire student ambassadors um, and marketing assistants who come and help us at events, help us online to basically market the university. And we pay very well for that. So there's lots of opportunities to work, but you do need to have a CV up to date and you need to be willing to kind of get yourself out there and really promote yourself to companies in the city if you want to find work. Once you graduate, obviously, we know it's really important that you um, you want to get a good job. Um, and that's what we're building up to throughout your degree. The outcome would be to get a good job at the end. So we have a large careers team at the university who you can access from the point of joining to up to five years after you graduate. So they're there to help with things like CVs, interview guidance, um, they also hold um, a couple of recruitment fairs each year where employers come from around the south region of the UK to promote jobs that they have available. Um, we also have a big database of jobs that are available as well. Um, and, and also lots too. So lots of our graduates go and work abroad, um, whether they are British students or international students. So each department has a really good um, access to lots of jobs around the world. So we would encourage and help you to access this uh, career centre throughout your time at university. And they will be coming around when you first start to kind of tell you about their, their services that they offer. In terms of the fees, um, the fees vary depending on the type of course that you study. So if you study a, a course that would be uh, classroom based, such as history, English, um, these kind of more um, humanities based courses where your classroom and lecture theatre based, it would be about £14,700 
per year that you study. If you are studying a lab based course, so a course that requires equipment within the university, such as pharmacy or mechanical engineering, then it would be up to £17,600 per year. Um, and you've got the fees for the placement years, and that really depends on the course that you're studying. But generally, it's around 10% of your fees if you are going to go and do a placement year. Um, we ask for a deposit of 3,500 prior to you gaining a CAS. So you pay your deposit and that basically firms you up as a definite student to Portsmouth. And then we will provide you with a CAS, which you can then go and get your visa with. So that gives you an overview of the fees, but we do also have some scholarships available to students. So um, first of all, we have a 1,600 pound discount for students from a big range of countries. Egypt is one of them, but also Lebanon, Jordan, um, all the South Asian countries, um, and there's a lot other, lot of others. So you'd have to go on our website to check, but you would get that automatically once you apply, you would have the £1,600 taken off. If you are a range of 10 nationalities, and these include Egypt, um, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and others, you could be entitled to a more merit-based scholarship, which is £5,000 discount. Um, you would need to apply for this. So it's, like I said, merit-based, and we are looking for strong students with good grades to come onto that, uh, that merit-based one. Um, and we will give students, if they've studied with us previously, and then moving on to a master's degree, a 20% discount. Um, I will just say that those discounts are for one year of your studies, okay? So if you're doing an undergraduate, it would be for the first year. In terms of accommodation, prices range from about £102 per week up to £179. That's really for the um, more the uh, halls of residence. There's a big range of halls of residence now in the city, both privately owned and also owned by the university. Um, and you are guaranteed a place in halls of residence if you're in your first year of study. We also have loads of private accommodation um, in housing across the city that tends to be a cheaper option could even be as little as kind of 79 pounds a week that kind of price and you would share that with um, a couple of other students you have your own bedroom but you would share the kitchen dining space same in halls of residence we always give your own bedroom but you tend to share the kitchen dining place with others within your um, within your flat that you're sharing in terms of entry requirements, we tend to be about three Bs at A-level, which is around 112 to 120 UCAS points. So we can be a bit flexible on that, depending on what course you're coming on to um, and also what curriculum you're studying as well. In terms of the Thanawea, we would need you to get 60% and you could go to foundation with that. If you're doing the Indian curriculum, 70 to 75 percent, and you can come directly into the university. Um, and then we've got international baccalaureate, about 28 points um, from your diploma to come directly into the university. We will accept students with a range of um, English levels, so you don't all have to take IELTS. Obviously, we do need to show that you've done a good English course, so either IELTS, the Duolingo, um, TOEFL, one of them, or if you've got IGCSEs and a C and above in English, then we will accept that. If you've done 75% in English from your Indian CBSC, we will accept that. In terms of the Thanawea, you would need to get IELTS, and if you're coming into foundation, it would be 5.5 and 5.5 in each component, 